drug that I take for my cancer, acalabrutinib, was uh, developed uh, here at Ohio State as one of the lead institutions with Pelotonia funding. Exactly. So I have a very personal level of gratitude to the ridership as well. This is the James Cancer Free World Podcast. I'm Steve Wartenberg, and my guest is Dr. Rafe Pollock. Rafe is the director of the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center. The, the idea for this podcast actually came from Doug Ullman, the CEO of Pelotonia, during episode 82. Doug talked about how Pelotonia is really, when you think about it, a long-term investment in the James and the Comprehensive Cancer Center that is paying dividends, really big dividends right now, and will continue to do so for years to come and just continue to save more and more lives. I I never really thought of it in quite that way, but as soon as I heard Doug say those words, it just it makes perfect sense. And then I immediately thought, who better to explain this concept of the long-term investment in cancer race research than Rafe, whose career has been all about a long-term commitment to cancer research and to treating his patients. So Rafe, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much, Steve. Glad to be here. So let's let's start with the big question, which I think a lot of people don't fully understand. They hear cancer research and it costs a lot of money and takes time, but I don't think they have the full picture of of why. So so fill us in. Why does cancer research take so long to go from what's called the bench to the bedside? Well, some of us would uh, uh, maintain that it actually moves very rapidly in that direction, but I understand that uh, someone is a patient or a patient family member, uh, the progress can appear, especially to those groups, to be painfully slow. But if you think about this as a continuum from the basic uh, research question in the laboratory bench to through phase three trials and deployment into the clinic, that can easily easily be at least five and more frequently a 10-year timeline. Yeah. And the thing that people need to realize that this is, it's not one disease like COVID where they come up with a vaccine for one target. There are, and you tell me, thousands, if not tens of thousands of targets to go after in cancer. Oh, absolutely. Uh, But uh, in defense of our our vaccine development colleagues, uh, I'm not sure that the general public is aware of what an 11 month timeline really represents in the anti-COVID vaccination uh, development story. A miracle uh, of sorts. <laughs> it, it is, it, well, uh, uh, a miracle implies uh, mystic things <laughs> yeah, that I don't have true. much understanding <laughs> about, but, but an amazing, an amazing accelerated pace, uh, almost like uh, landing a man on the moon in, in, in a similar time framework. Really spectacular. Well, so that leads me into Pelotonia funding and its importance because COVID, the vaccine, had significant funding. And I guess it all comes down to the funding that's necessary to go through all those steps you mentioned. So yeah. Pelotonia, it's, it's right around $220 million so far. Yep. So give us a little history on sort of the different buckets and major areas that 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 220 million has been and will continue to, to go into. Sure. The uh, entire Pelotonia program is um, a remarkable uh, development, uh, not only in terms of its scope and its magnitude, but the means by which it brings together dedicated riders uh, and other uh, participants from the community in direct connection with the research efforts in the cancer center. Uh, One of the strong, uh, what I call the secret sauce uh, of Ohio State University research writ large and the cancer research entity in particular is this remarkable connectivity between the community and the research activities. Uh, And 
Uh, it, it is something that is, is unfortunately in some ways quite rare on uh, other institutions. Other, other institutions are trying to emulate it, uh, but the spirit of collaboration and connectivity that we have here in Columbus is such that uh, it's, it's simply a very, very unusual and, and very positive uh, development. The program has been in existence now for 12 years. Uh, last year, although we didn't have a ride uh, and that impacted in the overall amount of funds that were raised, there was a very important uh, hallmark. And that was that we had almost 3000 more participants that signed up and through their various efforts helped raise money for cancer research here. And that's 3000 more than has ever been accomplished uh, in previous years. This year, we're hoping, as Doug probably informed you, that we will be able to actually have a ride. The uh, participation and fundraising to date has been brisk. Uh, we're hoping that we can not only uh, maintain that 3,000 rider uh, edge that we achieved last year, but that the overall funding profiles will likewise increase as uh, uh, those who are able can get back on the saddle and, and invest their sweat equity uh, in this activity. The Pelotonia funds go for a wide variety of uh, cancer research and cancer research related uh, uh, efforts. One of the things that's hard sometimes to understand is that funding from the National Cancer Institute only goes so far. Uh, a grant will cover some expenses, but there are many, many expenses where discretionary funds would be extremely helpful that a grant doesn't cover. And for this, we turn to Pelotonia. What are some four examples? Well, uh, for example, the entire Institute of Immuno-Oncology faculty recruitment amounting to somewhere between 30 and 35 new faculty to Ohio State at its completion, at its maturity, would not be possible without the hundred plus million dollars that Pelotonia has committed to that effort specifically. Those positions are not covered by uh, National Cancer Institute funding. Pelotonia covers them. Another critical example are, is our robust training grant uh, program. We have uh, a three component Pelotonia fellowship uh, uh, training grant mechanism that is awarded to individuals on a competitive peer reviewed basis involving grant uh, uh, readers and judges that are drawn both from within Ohio State as well as leading sister institutions outside of Ohio State. Over the years, the return on that investment is somewhere between five to tenfold, meaning that for each dollar of Pelotonia funds invested in a researcher, ultimately those individuals will generate between five and tenfold more dollars in external funding. So from what I've, I've heard before is that often the Pelotonia grant money is for that initial research, to the collection of data, that is then accumulated to get these further grants you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. Otherwise, they wouldn't have this money to do the, the, the you know, hit and miss the research. research. That's, vital. Oh, that's yeah. exactly right, Steve. Uh, and, and so that's, that is another example of a very special area uh, there where uh, Pelotonia has been very, very helpful. And again, this ties us directly to the community, including uh, major... Uh, community leadership uh, uh, members who serve on the Pelotonia board. Uh, so it's, it's all good for the good. Uh, there, are, there are other areas other than the Institute for Immuno-Oncology where Pelotonia may become uh, more involved uh, in the future going forward, such as the new Center for Cancer Engineering uh, that we're developing with the College of Engineering, the College of Medicine, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Pharmacy, and the College of Veterinary Medicine, all participating in this effort where the premise is developing engineering 
problem solving approaches to clinically resistant cancer problems. And there's a large number of subcomponents within that broad area. Okay, that was a great start, but there's a lot more to come from Pelotani funding, but we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right, right back with Rafe to hear some more about what Pelotonia has funded at the Comprehensive Cancer Center. A revolution in lung cancer treatment is happening at the James. We're proving lung cancer isn't solely defined by location and stage, but rather the individual molecules and genes that drive it. Simply put, there is no routine lung cancer. That's why our world-renowned specialists put their expertise towards treating one particular lung cancer, yours. At The James, we go beyond the routine to prevent, detect, treat, and cure your lung cancer. To learn more, call 1-800-293-5066. We're back with Rafe Pollack, the director of the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center. And Rafe has done a great job of giving us an introduction to how the importance of the Peloton of funds, but we're going to dive a little deeper into it. And Rafe, I, I just know, uh, I don't know all the details, but I know that they're just not given out to anyone who asks that there's a really rigorous peer review process to determine who gets the money so that it's spent in the best possible way to advance science in the, the most and best way? Right. Well, Steve, we talked briefly about the uh, Pelotonia Fellowship Training Programs, uh, and those are peer-reviewed, meaning that internal and external experts in the air grant uh, application areas review the grants and then meet as a group to discuss the grants rigorously uh, and the a score is assigned from a large panel of these reviewers. Typically about 20 people are involved in the process. And then the best scores are tabulated uh, and become the basis for further discussions to decide who ultimately will receive the funding. Uh, all of the proposals that are submitted get a written review so that uh, given that most of these are submitted by younger investigators, they get feedback from more senior investigators to help them uh, realign their, uh, their research proposals uh, for potential funding uh, in the future. We, we also have uh, a, a mechanism by which standing uh, projects are evaluated. Um, although it is true that you can't simply send a, in a postcard asking for funding, we're always open to new ideas. And those ideas in turn are vetted by a number of different uh, entities. Uh, we have, as part of the Cancer Center Support Grant Mechanism, four standing programs uh, that are heavily funded by the National Cancer Institute. Each of these programs has between two and three leaders who are typically either full-time laboratory investigators in that area or clinician investigators who have patient care responsibilities. We also have a large uh, panel of what are called associate directors who have very specified areas of expertise within the cancer center. And these two panels meet on a very regular basis, uh, sometimes separately, sometimes together, at least twice a month. And one of the standing agenda items are evaluating new possible ideas that might be relevant uh, or applicable for receipt of Pelotonia uh, funding. Finally, uh, the Cancer Center has an external scientific advisory board uh, that consists of 15 national Cancer Center directors, deans of medical schools, and other leaders, uh, and an internal advisory board, which consists of the deans and or directors of research from all 15 colleges at Ohio State, as well as representatives from Nationwide Children's Hospital, and then the Pelotonia Board it, itself. And so all of these uh, various boards and committees are exposed to possible ideas for Pelotonia funding, vigorous discussions ensue, and ultimately what emerges are shared decisions about what are the appropriate directions for us to apply these hard sweat equity earned dollars that come from the Pelotonia ridership. 
Yeah, once several years ago, I got to sit in on the review process for some idea grants. And it was everyone was hooked up around the country over an intercon system. All these high ranking great scientists from around the country were giving their opinions and grading and doing exactly what you said. And it was just fascinating to hear the opinions and the advice and just the rigorous process before any dollars are given out. Yeah. Well, uh, we're, we're very proud about, of the mechanisms uh, and, of course, the return on investment and also the reality that if you don't get funded, at least you're going to get some very good feedback about uh, your research directions so that you can modify and go forward. Yeah, and one thing I just wanted to touch back on a second, and the Pelotonia Fellowship Program you've mentioned, that it's undergraduates, graduate students, medical school students, and PhD students, and it's it's over 400 now, is that right? Yes. Actually, I think it's over 500 at this point. So that's an army of the next generation of cancer researchers who are going to work here and around the country. Absolutely. And we do follow these individuals in their career trajectories to uh, ensure that the dollars have been well spent (laughs) and uh, parenthetically so that they can always come back to us for advice uh, here at the mother house. So it's a a give and take back and forth over time. Uh, Very vigorous uh, and a real a real uplifting part of the, the program. Yeah, some of them are now seven or eight years out of the fellowship program and are really making and making their mark. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just to give you some uh, additional examples of the types of programs that have come out of this multi pronged advisory process. The uh, Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center has what's called a catchment area meaning a geographic area that we take responsibility for regarding the cancer problem. And our our catchment area, as the largest land-grant institution in the state of Ohio, is the entire state of Ohio, all 88 counties. And as part of that responsibility, over time, with careful development and vetting by the various constituencies and communities, we have developed four statewide screening programs that seek to address particular cancer risks within our within our catchment area. And I would like to just describe these very, very briefly uh, so that uh, uh, the podcast uh, uh, audience can have some sense of yet another aspect uh, of uh, Pelotonia research investment. So one program is a wide scale lung cancer screening program, given the reality that unfortunately, cigarette smoking in our catchment area uh, remains higher than national averages. And likewise, the incidence of lung cancer also remains elevated. We have several uh, areas within the state where this is particularly a problem, uh, including uh, Uh, a large number of major metropolitan areas with uh, underserved medical, uh, medically underserved populations. Uh, A lot of people from outside of Ohio don't know that the 35 southeasternmost uh, counties in in Ohio are actually uh, in Appalachia, uh, where there's a higher than national average uh, for cigarette smoking incidents. Uh, And then uh, an an additional uh, 35 to 40 counters, counties are considered to be rural, where again, there are some very specific um, health problems where widespread, widespread screening programs becomes very, very uh, important. We also have a large scale colorectal uh, uh, risk screening program, identifying uh, families where there is of uh, a, a colorectal cancer issue to begin with, and then doing genetic analyses, molecular genetic analyses on other members of the family to determine potential risk of developing colorectal cancer in the future. And if such a risk is identified, then, then arranging for ongoing uh, intensive screening to detect such cancers at their very earliest points of inception. Uh, the uh, uh, another program uh, that uh, focuses on a, a disease with higher incidence in the state 
is our cancer of the uterus, endometrial cancer uh, screening program, uh, where there are a number of definable risk factors, uh, including obesity, uh, which is more, more prevalent in Ohio than the national averages. And finally, a program where, again, Pelotonia has been instrumental, one that we're particularly proud and enthusiastic of called Turning the Page on Breast Cancer, which is focusing on the unfortunate reality that uh, inner city African-American women do not typically have access to the same level of screening processes as recommended uh, by uh, entities such as the American Cancer Society. Uh, access to mammography, image-directed biopsies. Uh, and this, in turn, has translated into higher rates of mortality for breast cancer among African-American women. And we want to address that and address that vigorously. And so this new screening program, again, across the entire state, is called Turning the Page on Breast Cancer. And Pelotonia is making very, very significant funding uh, impacts uh, in this area. Yeah, I've, I just recently heard about this one, and I know that Heather Hampel and Electra Pasquette are going to run that, and yes. uh, hopefully we'll be on a podcast soon. And tell me if this sounds right, but these four programs, the threads that run between them is prevention, screening, and serving underserved populations. If we're serious about impacting on the cancer problem, we need to target populations that are at definable particular risk, screen them, and then help them get the therapy, including preventive therapies, in order to decrease cancer mortality. Uh, it's good work, it's important work, and we are so grateful to Pelotonia and the ridership for helping to fund these initiatives. We're making yeah. a difference. Yeah, this commitment to underserved populations has become just so much more important in the past year or two, and it's great to see your, your yeah. commitment to it. Well, we, we just feel that this is a, a, a very important direction for us as a group collectively to pursue, and we're grateful for the opportunity to do so. Now, I know you can't go ahead and tell us what is the next statewide program until it's actually uh, vetted and announced, but c can you give us some sort of sense of the next couple of years, the impact of Pelotonia dollars, perhaps in a certain direction or type of programs that you, you see coming that are important? Well, there, there's always going to be a need for ongoing cancer screening programs. Uh, and much of that will be defined by the cancer burden that exists within our communities. And that's where uh, Dr. Pasquette's work becomes so critically important because through her efforts, we have uh, one of the strongest community outreach and engagement programs uh, in the United States. And that's been so recognized by the National Cancer Institute. So. Through this program, working with community groups, uh, as well as larger epidemiologic databases, we can identify potential areas that will merit for, uh, more aggressive screening strategies in the future. So that's very exciting. There are a number of areas that are just getting out of the blocks right now that, that haven't even shown up on the Pelotonia research agenda, but are truly amazing, such as the use of three-dimensional printing devices to make models of solid tumors that surgeons can then take into the operating room to help guide in a very specific manner how best to perform a, a resection and ultimately a reconstructive surgical procedure. Boy, it sounds like it's it, it's almost unlimited the number of areas you can go into. Yeah. Uh, are, I take it you'll be riding again this year. I uh, probably won't be riding myself uh, because of my, uh, I can't afford to get it all dehydrated out on the road. Uh, as part of my uh, chronic leukemia, I have a cardiac condition called atrial fibrillation. And if I get dehydrated, 
It's much more likely that I can throw a clot elsewhere into my body. But uh, my daughter, who just started her senior year of medical school here at Ohio State, and I uh, intend to volunteer to help man uh, one of the first aid stations. Uh, we've done that in the past, and uh, it's uh, particularly gratifying to see this next generation coming up to help out. You have written in the past, and, and yes, as have. you mentioned, you have, you're in the midst of your cancer journey yes. and are doing well. It sounds I am. like thank you. Which yes. knock on wood, you'll continue to do well and be a volunteer at the next yeah. many, many patients. And, and I might just mention that the, the drug that I take for my cancer, acalabrutinib, was uh, developed uh, here at Ohio State as one of the lead institutions with Pelotonia funding. Exactly. So I have yeah. a very personal level of gratitude to the ridership as well. Wow. So that's that's quite the personal connection yes. to Pelotonia, the drug that's saving Keeping your me life. Alive. It's yeah. not overly dramatic. It is. It, yeah. It, is, it was developed here by John Bird, yep. your great friend and, and colleague. colleague. Yep. Wow. So. Well, obviously, that's uh, that helps explain your commitment to Pelotonia and why it's yeah. so important to you and to everyone. And hopefully from everything you've explained about the, uh, all these amazing areas the research is going, we can we can get all the people you talked about. Yeah. Tremendous positive momentum. And I'm just, again, very, very grateful to Pelotoni and the ridership and the opportunity, Steve, to share these thoughts with you. Well, thanks as always. I knew you'd be the perfect person to put all this in perspective and you've, you just did it uh, as always, like a, like a, a brilliant college professor. <laughs> well, you're a friend to say that, but thank you for the opportunity. This podcast is brought to you by the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, Arthur G. James Cancer Hospital, and Richard J. Solov Research Institute. For more information, check out our website, cancer.osu.edu.